All right. Was there ever life on Mars? It's a question that's intrigued us for centuries. Tomorrow, NASA will launch a new rover to the red planet to take a step towards answering that question. That scientists believe that ancient Mars was warmer, it had rivers and oceans, but did it once harbor life? Today, we have NASA engineer Diana Trujillo to talk about this exciting mission to the red planet and what we hope to do there. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. So it's not every day that we can say you're getting ready to launch a rover to another planet. So tell us about this exciting mission, this exciting mission that's launching and what makes it different from the previous Mars missions. Absolutely. So in the past, uh, the last mission that I worked on was Curiosity. And uh, our main mission was to find out if there was uh, the chemical composition to sustain life. And with Perseverance, now we're going the next level, which is to answer the question if there was any life on the surface of Mars at some point. And so Perseverance is headed towards a special crater on Mars, right? What makes it so special? Well, the crater that we're going to, which is Jaser Crater, is think about it as the Tahoe Lake size. And what makes it interesting is the fact that uh, the minerals that we find in there are kind of clay. And so when we look at the clay, there's, there is mixture with water, which means that probably that is a good spot to find out if there was life on the surface. That's so neat. What do you think is the coolest part of the Perseverance mission? There's a lot of stuff in the Perseverance mission that is pretty amazing, starting with the mission itself. But then if I look at the engineering aspect of it, uh, there's a few things that I will mention. One of them is we are carrying a helicopter. So we are used to seeing drones on Earth and seeing the Earth's view of your city. Now we are actually carrying a helicopter to see the Earth's view of uh, the surface of Mars. Uh, in addition to that, we're also having the most complex mechanical system that we have ever flown to any planet, which is a caching system. It's a system where the robotic arm will drill a, a sample and then that sample will get collected put in tubes, and then ready to be sent back to, to Earth with the next mission. And if I read correctly, you worked on that arm, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, I'm uh, the deputy surface phase lead for the robotic arm science, which means that uh, the work that I did is with respect to the robotic arm and the two instruments, Sherlock and Pixel, um, in Watson, actually, which is a pretty cool name, Sherlock and Watson, and uh, we're using those instruments to map the surface of Mars to see any biosignatures. That's really awesome. So sending a car-sized rover to another planet that's 65 million miles away is no easy task. Can you talk about the things that make the journey so difficult? There's lots of things, right? We're coming out of that launch vehicle with a amazingly high vibration. Uh, as soon as you detach and the fairing opens, uh, you're hoping that you did well and that nothing broke. So the next thing you do is a lot of checkouts as you're going and cruising to Mars between six to seven months. And then you get to this edge of the, of the atmosphere of Mars where now you turn into a ball of fire and in a very violent way, go through the atmosphere of Mars, it land with retro rockets and you know, bring down in a small tether, a car size rover to the surface. After you describe the ball of fire, I'm not so sure it's a good idea, but does this mission help set the stage for human missions to Mars? Yes, it does. Um, so it turns out that the way that we the way that we go through the atmosphere of Mars is with the eyes open. And what I mean with that is in the past, we had let the systems themselves decide where we're going and where we're going to land. We do the same thing this go around. However, we're actually taking images as we're going through the atmosphere. So in other words, it helps us with the humans to Mars because we can pinpoint where we're going to land. And uh, that helps you if you're going to bring, you know, habitats, to the surface of Mars for future humans. In addition to that, though, we also have an instrument called MOXIE, which is going to actually generate oxygen on the surface of Mars. That is so cool. Well, maybe we'll get to go to Mars soon. I hope so. Thank you so much for joining us, Diana. My fellow space nerds and I will be cheering you on for the launch tomorrow. There's lots more to come on The Morning Show just after this break.